to our online viewers, it's so wonderful to have you here with us. We welcome you to join us on this live stream every Sunday. It's an honor to be able to encourage you. If you're ever in our area, we welcome you to come and join us for one of these services. We'll make you feel right at home. And we've been praying for you and everybody here and believing for you to have an amazing, awesome future. The best future that you can ever believe for. And we just believe that God's not trying to put stop signs in front of you, roadblocks, ditches, problems, potholes. What he's trying to do is smooth the road before you and get you on the path to life. Anybody excited about that? Walking forward, moving forward, having a great experience. Our marriage is getting better. Life at work getting better. Businesses going forward. Healing and health in our bodies. Friendships. All these wonderful things. Family. Everything we can talk about. God has a desire to bring life to that. So I've got a question to start off with. And I want to know, if you could be any animal, what would you be? My wife would be a lioness. I know she always has the great hair. And uh, sometimes she has the different colored clo- clothes and the, or whatever. And uh, she looks sometimes like a lioness. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what you want to be. Would it be a flying, you know, a, a bird? You know, you, you know, you might want to be a bird. They look so great when they're in the air. It's effortless flying. And what about a, a, a fish swimming? You might be in the water, you know, dory. No, no one wants to be dory. But you, <laughs> you want to be a fish swimming. It just seems so easy. They're in the water. So what about a, a little monkey in a tree just swinging around and having a great time? A tiger, a lion, a, an ostrich, I don't know, a camel. I don't, <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know what you want to be. But, you know, I don't think we really want to be an animal. <laughs> We're a human being. But there are certain things that you see in animals that they're just so attractive. You see a fish swimming and it's like, oh man, if I could swim like that, I'd get a gold medal in the Olympics. And uh, if, if he could fly like that, wouldn't it just be so free, feel so free to fly? And just, you see those people in, the, in those suits, they go down the mountain and squirrel suits. And you look at those things and you're like, oh my gosh, how do they do that? But imagine a bird, it just soars and you know, a monkey having fun in the bush. It's just going wherever it likes, free. And I think what we see, the, the qualities of these animals, their gift or their, their potential, what they're doing when they're doing their, what they're called to do, their purpose. A bird flies, a fish swims, and uh, predominantly that's what they do. We look at that, we're attracted to that highlight of the quality that brings freedom of expression. And I do believe that God wants every human on planet Earth not to become an animal, but to experience that freedom of expression by discovering their potential, by discovering their, that what they're meant to be here on planet Earth for. And so I'd like to read a verse to you, and we started out with this at the beginning of the year because we're talking about the truth that sets us free. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then Jesus turned to the Jews who had claimed to believe in him. If you stick with this, We'll stick with the teaching, stick with his manner of life and and freedom. If you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure, then you will experience for yourselves, not just hearing from someone else. You'll experience for yourselves the truth, and the truth will free you. The truth of knowing everything he says does work. Now, Jesus doesn't lie, and what he tells us is beneficial. And when we put into practice what he tells us, all of a sudden, the seeds of that get into us. They grow, and then they manifest, and we experience truth working in our lives. And now we're free from our own opinions. We're free because we've seen it work. Now we're free from the thoughts that said it wouldn't work. And now we're free. And so that's what that scripture means. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You'll know it by worked out experience. And so we're talking about the truth. Today, we're starting a new series. The truth about your purpose and God's plan that will set you and I free. You know, being free to be who you're meant to be. Everybody look at your fingers and your thumb and have a look at your fingerprints. And maybe if you've got your wife or your daughter or your son or your friend or your family member next to you, maybe you could try and put your hand on their hand if you can. Just, let's have a try. Okay. Oh, my. It almost fits perfectly. We're meant to be. We're made. That's how you might meet a partner in church. I don't know. No, no. I'm teasing. But look at your fingerprints. They're different from the person next to you. They're different from the one because you're unique. 
You're on planet Earth, and there's a purpose. There's a design. God is not. You're, my pastor says you're not a mistake in zippers. <laughs> you, there's a purpose for you. There's, there's a plan. There's a there's a reason. There's, there's, we're not just living in, in this, you know, this whole mess. No, there is a reason for life and a reason for existing. So there's nothing more freeing than doing what you were created to do. There's nothing more freeing for a bird than to fly or a fish to swim or for a, or a monkey to swing through the trees and, and have a great time. And, and, and when you discover what you're meant to do, where, what you're meant to be on this planet, you'll be liberated. You'll be free and excited. And, and many of us are discovering this, what we're meant to do. And so there's, there's nothing more freeing. When you find your purpose, you find that sweet spot in life. Michael Jordan is almost synonymous with basketball. Actually, if you look at the Hall of Fame, he's known as the number one, the greatest basketballer who ever lived. And uh, in the 80s and 90s, he reformed the NBA. He changed. He brought it up to another level, made it, made it a pinnacle and made it something special. Even Jordans today, everybody's got a pair of Jordans. And uh, so even the cat wears Jordans in some places. And so Michael Jordan had this thought, and he, you know, he, he's gifted athletically. And that was a gift given to him. And, and he focused that athletic gift on, on basketball. And he put a lot of effort in, a lot of training and preparation. But he was gifted. And he went to the top. And so because of that, he, he, there was, you know, he plays certain games. And he said he'd get in this thing called the zone. And he'd be on the three-point line. And he'd go to do a shot. And, he, and he'd, he'd look at it. And it's like, it was like the, the hoop, the basketball hoop was a hula hoop. It was just so big to him that he would just bang, bang, just sh every shot was going in and in and in. He said he got in the zone. And that's what happens to you when you're in your sweet spot, in the purpose, in the function of what you're meant to be. Everything is bubbling and perking and, and life is, is just exciting and things are going amazing. And it just seems like you're a bird flying and a fish swimming. You're doing what you're meant to do. And it just seems like this ease comes around you. Now, it did look easy what he was doing. But remember, there was a lot of work and a lot of gifting went into that. But, so I'm not saying take away from the work, but I'm saying there is a place we can come where it just life seems effortless. And that one of the things that you need to step into is, is your purpose to discover that and find why we're here on planet Earth. And we understand, we look at, so God has given every human a purpose, a reason, a hope, and a desire. And we're going to look at, look at that for a little while. Where you fit in God's plan is called your purpose. God has an amazing plan. In actual fact, he started that plan before he created the earth. Jesus was set apart before the earth was even created, before humans even came into existence. Jesus was a part of that plan. He was set apart to die on the cross before humans ever sinned. God had a plan. And 2,000 years ago, he enacted that plan. He, he set that. And now we can step into that freedom of, of eternal life. That's part of the plan. Now, where's our part in that? It's our purpose. When we step into our part of that big plan, we're in our purpose. And so let's look at this in a verse. Let's jump into Romans 8, 28. It, it says, we are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good. Can you just say something good? Something good is about to happen when we're walking in his purposes. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will walk in his teachings and you will discover the truth works. And here's a part of it. We are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitation. To live according to his plan. Now, when we live according to his plan, his plan is the eternal plan, the massive scale of that plan. And we're only a little blip on eternity. Blip. There we went. That was us. Blip. There we go again. Just a little blip. Blip. That was it. It's like on an, on an, oscill uh, on a, an oscilloscope in the hospital. Blip. Blip. There it is. That was our life. But in the timeline of this massive timeline, blip. Blip. There you were. So, but that little blip is so valuable. Because that's called your purpose. Everyone say, my purpose. The reason you get to be alive is your life gets to count in this great plan called your purpose, your reason. 
And so this helps us to have, have a greater understanding of what life is all about. And it says, and it says it, his invitation, it's an invite. Oh, I love getting invitations. I love it. I love you get a, maybe even a VIP invitation. They're even more exciting. Well, this is greater than a VIP invitation. You've been given an invite by the creator of all, all creation to walk into his plan called your purpose. And it goes on to say, according to his plan. That word plan in the original Greek is prothesis, and which means is, is something set before. And it's something that's set up beforehand. It's something that's ready for us to step into. In actual fact, it says it's a setting forth suggests a deliberate plan, a proposition, an advanced plan, an intention, and a design. Okay, look at humans. We're not just a mistake. Two nostrils, two eyes, two ears, two hands, two feet, two knees, two butt cheeks, <laughs> two face cheeks. Some people have two chins, <laughs> one forehead, okay, one nose, one mouth, okay, okay, and look at this, we are designed, one eye up here, one eye not here, one eye not here, a belly button there, but not an eye, two eyes in the middle of my head, two, so we can get depth perception, and we can see ears on the side pointing forwards, nose that way in case it rained. Wouldn't it be coming to church today if your nose was up the other way? Wouldn't that be a bad design? Oh my goodness. What a terrible design. And look at these two things. This thing on this hand and this thing on this hand. Oh my gosh. It's almost a mirror. That wasn't an accident. There's a thumb. There's a thumb. There's a forefinger. There's the one we don't point on its own. There's, there's all the way. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm designed. Oh my gosh, two feet. Kids do this all the time. We've got to get back to being kids. They look at themselves. <gasps> and they get their toes. If you a little kid play with their toes, one toe up, one toe down. Try it. Come on. I know you want to do it. One toe up, one toe down. My gosh, I've got big toe. Two big toes. Then down to the little feet, little toes. It's like, oh my gosh. We're designed. Look at this. Both knees point forwards when I go down. That would be very hard to walk if one went forward and one went back. You <laughs> we're designed we're not an accident we are not a mistake in zippers come on where god had a plan and a purpose for humanity this is all designed we, this is amazing I, I know i'm crazy i think i think about this stuff often <laughs> i think about things like this it's, anyway let's jump into a little bit more god's plan and purpose is good can, it, can someone say good plan a good plan and we look at how this plan starts out is this. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, shall, <laughs> it goes on to say, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's how it starts. I was driving to church today with my son, my second youngest son, and we were talking about religion versus relationship and he said he was in a place hearing about religion and he said all he could hear was be good be good be good and he said he was going there for a couple of weeks and he said i tried for two weeks but i know every time they started talking about the ten commandments i was lying i wasn't obeying my parents i was stealing just little stealing little lies little you know, disobedience you know what i mean so i said i only could do it for two weeks and i gave up and i said jesus came to die for us because we cannot make it on our own. This is how it all starts. John 3.16. Listen, we don't get into our destiny on our own. We just. I said to him, look, that's the answer. You're such a wise son. I said, Jesus is not asking us to be perfect. Jesus is just asking for our heart. All he wants is for us to believe and to, to have a relationship. And then he'll work everything else on the road. Dr. Carmen has some announcements for us. Then she's going to talk to us a little bit more about our focus on destiny and purpose. God bless you today, guys. Good morning, great church. As you're watching online, give us some hearts this morning. Let us know that you are connected to the family this morning. We want to encourage you, if you're watching on Facebook Live right now, to push the share button. Let some of your family or friends be able to view this portion of the message as we're starting a new series today on God's truth about your purpose, the plan of God that will set 
you free. So we encourage you to push that share button. This morning, I also encourage you live and those of you who are online to that this is a very incredible month for us this month because we get to vote this month. And we're thankful for the people who paid the price for our freedom to be able to vote. So we believe every believer should be voting. I'm excited. I'm doing the pre-vote today. Okay, after church, I get to go to the pre-vote. I encourage you, um, educate yourself, find out this is an important election for us. So get ready to vote. And this morning, we do have our time of giving. So I'm going to share with you the tithe and offering message as you're live this morning. If you need an envelope, lift up your hand. Our hosts are going to give that to you. As you're watching online, you can text to give, use the app to give. Of course, you can mail in your checks. But we want to look at the word this morning when it comes to our giving. In Psalm 54, verse 6 to 7, it says, Lord, I will give. Everybody say the word give. Lord, I will give free will offerings to you, for I will praise your good name. You save me from all my troubles. How many have ever been in trouble and God saved you? You saved me from all my troubles. I saw my enemies defeated. This morning, we want to look at the definition of that word give. Lord, I will give my offerings to you. That word give means to freely transfer a possession of something to someone, to hand it over, to cause or allow someone or something to have, to provide, to, to supply with. And so it says here, Lord, I will give. I will give my offerings to you. It's God, I will make a transfer to you. God, I, I will hand something over into the kingdom of God. And we believe that when we have a heart of generosity, when we have the heart of the giver, God declares in his word over and over over again, the blessing comes on the giver. And so this morning, I want to pray the blessing over you as you give this morning. We want to declare it over you, over your families, over your businesses, over your careers. God's incredible blessing as we take this time to be a giver. So let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to give, God, to honor your good name, God, to honor you, to thank you, God, for all the times you have rescued us out of trouble, God, to thank you for the times how you have defeated the enemies that stood before us, God. And so, Father, today we return the tithe, that first 10%, God, we return it to you. We honor you this morning. And, God, as we do that, we thank you, God, that the windows of heaven, God, they are open over the tithers of great church in Jesus name. God, this morning, now we give our free will offerings. God, we position our heart with generosity to give freely this morning. God, as we give our offerings today, we decree and declare God over your givers. God, that it will return to them, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God, we declare your favor, your increase, your goodness, your blessing over them this week, this month. God, surprise them with your blessing. Surprise them, God. Let their eyes be open to see the goodness of God right here in the land of the living. And we thank you for it today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. And so we are starting this new series on the truth about your purpose. This morning, I want you to say my purpose. The truth about your purpose and the plan of God. And we believe that God wants you to be free to be who you are meant to be. Free to be who you are meant to be, not bound, not caged in, not boxed in, not limited, but free to be who God has planned for you to be. And Jeremiah 29, 11, a famous scripture that I know a lot of us know, and it says, these are God's words. It says, I say this because I know what I have planned for you. I want you to say this morning, God has a plan for me. So we're not just roaming around and, and God didn't just kind of, you know, let out a breath or let out a burp and all of a sudden there you were. And he's like, whoa, what am I going to do with this kid? You know, this is a surprise to me. No, God has a plan for you. I say this because I know I have what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you. I want you to say that with me this morning. Say good plans for me. He said, not only do I have a plan, it's a good plan. Not only do I have a plan, it's a good plan. I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. Isn't that good news? You know, you got the all-powerful God, you know, and some people, you know, represent this in movies. They show God as this angry God, this, this God, you do one thing wrong, and he's just going to kind of smack you with a stick or something. They rep religion represents God as an angry, mean God. But what does it say? He says, I don't plan to hurt you. 
I don't plan to harm you. This is, this is God speaking to us this morning. I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you a hope. And I want you to say the next two words with me this morning. A good future. Have you ever wondered what does the future hold for me? What's it going to look like? What's my life going to look like in five years? What's my life going to look like in 10 years? What's my life going to look like in 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever it might be years? It's a good future. So when you have that question, what's it going to look like? You can say, it's a good future. Maybe I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but it is a good future. And so this morning we're kicking off this, this series on what is God's plan? What is God's purpose for my life? That truth sets us free. And so I encourage you to take notes as we're in this series, and I want you to write in your notes this morning this first thing. My purpose is first to know the one who made me. That's the first key to my purpose. The first part of my purpose is to know the one who made me. Know the one who designed me. Know the one who put this quirky personality with this sense of humor in this, in this body with this color of eyes to know the one who made me. And so that is the first key to our purpose. You know, we know that our first purpose is to know him. It's to know him. And Philippians 3.10 says this, for my determined purpose is that I may know him. Say know him. My determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. I like the fact there that it says progressively. You know, every relationship that you have in your life, how many know that you progressively get to know that person more? Right? I, I married this man. I thought I knew him. But progressively, I've got to know him a lot more over the last 25 years. How many know that's true? You know, you have a friendship. You're, you're on a team in church. You're, you're serving with other team members. But progressively, week by week, what? You're getting to know them better. You're learning about them. You're learning how to work together. You're learning about their purpose and your purpose and how you can slide them together. Progressively, we also get to know God better. And it says, more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. It says, we're learning to find out how wonderful God is. The wonders of God. It says, we're learning to find it out more clearly. Where our eyes are open to see Wow, like there's a facet of God I didn't even know about. There's a, there's a part of God that I, I yet didn't understand the wonders of God. How many of you have ever been to the mountains? You've been to the Rocky Mountains, and what do you do? You see the wonders of God. How many have ever seen the sunset? And you see the wonders of the creativity of God. It says that we are progressively getting to know him more and more. It's our determined purpose to know the one who made us. And so this morning, I want to talk about how do I step into my purpose of knowing God more? How do I take that step this morning? The first one is decide to put God first. Make the decision to put God first in your life. Proverbs 3 verse 6, it says, in everything you do, put God first. Now, if you'll notice here, the scripture doesn't say in some of the things you do or in your religious area of your life, or the spiritual area of your life. You know, people sometimes segment life into different boxes. You know, well, I've got my business, and I've got my relationships, and I've got my, my career, and I've got my, you know, my extracurricular activities, my sports, and then I've got my, my spiritual box. And in the spiritual box of life, I'll put God first. But it says here, in everything you do. It's like God is not in a spiritual box of your life. God begins to weave through every single area of your life. As we're learning about our purpose, it's opening that door saying, God, you can weave into every facet of my life, every segment of my life. It says, in everything you do, put God first. And he will direct you. How many like it when you get some good directions? Ever stopped at a gas station and got some bad directions? And you realized after that person did not know where they were going, right? Do, do they even live here, right? You, do, you begin to ask that, but you stop and get some good directions from someone. 
And when you get some, to, some good directions, it always leads to your destination, right? You get some good directions and it's like, there it is. Turn left here, turn right there. You land at the place you desire to go. God says, as we put him first, he's going to give us some good directions. He will direct you and he will crown your efforts with success. Now we recognize that we put effort into things. True. You put effort into your work. You put effort into your family. You put effort into your marriage. You put effort into your finances. You put effort into your physical body, right? You put effort into all these areas of your life. And we get discouraged and disappointed in life when we feel like we put some effort in and we didn't get any results. I know for me, like if I put some effort in and it's like, there's nothing there, right? You're like, something's not right. Something's not working. You know, anybody went on a new diet or a new exercise routine a month later, nothing's changed. Something's not working. We got to tweak something. I need a coach in my life. I need someone to come into my life and tell me what am I doing wrong? Because I want to see some results from my efforts. And God says, see, he is the coach in life. He says, if you let me direct your life, you're going to see some results from your efforts. I'm going to crown your efforts with success. I'm going to allow you to have the results that are going to show I am headed in the right direction. And so God needs to be first. And so, you know, some of the practical ways we can do that is we put God first in our time. Every morning we get up in the morning, we spend a little bit of time with God, right? And you say, I'm busy in the morning. I'm on the fly in the morning. Then maybe you don't have a lot of time, but we call it 10-10 time, right? You take 10 minutes to crack open the Bible and read the Bible. You take 10 minutes to pray and put on a song of worship. And, you know, if you you don't have 10-10, do 5-5, do 7-7, do 4-4. I don't know what you have every morning, but you just honor God in the morning. Put him first in the morning. You put them first this morning. You put them first in your week. Sunday morning, you're in the house, right? You put them first of your week. You're like, I got a busy week ahead of me. I got a lot of things ahead of me. I'm going to put God first in my week. You put them first in your finances. This morning, we gave, we tithed, we honored God. We said, God, you're going to be first in my finances. And you put them first in the major decisions of your life. You got a major decision to make. Who's the first call you make? Well, I got a trusted friend. Good. I'm glad you got a trusted friend. I got a godly friend. I'm glad you got a godly friend. But who's the first call you make? The first call you make is to the one who made you. The first call you make is to the one who made you. God, I got a major decision to make. Do I I take this promotion? Do I take this opportunity? Do I do this? Do I do that? The first call you make is to the one who knows you better than you know yourself. The one who made you. That's how we honor God and we put him first. And so I want you to write down in your notes, if you haven't already, my purpose is to know God and to put him first. My purpose is to know God and to put him first, to put him first in the areas of my life. The second one this morning, how do we step into this purpose of knowing God in a greater way? Express humility before God. And we studied humility a few weeks ago. And the word humility means a deep respect for God with the awareness of one's dependence on Christ and understanding I cannot do this alone. So there's just this understanding. I cannot fulfill my purpose alone. How many would give me a wave and you know that's true. I cannot fulfill my purpose without God's input. I cannot fulfill my purpose without God's direction. And Psalm 25 verse 8 to 9 says, God, how good you are to me. I want us to say that out loud this morning. Say, God, how good you are to me. And what a great way to start your, your time with God. God, how good you are to me. It says, when people turn to you, God, they discover how easy you are to please. So faithful and true. Now, I want to stop there for a second, how easy you are to please. Religion makes it look like God is hard to please. Isn't that true? It's like, well, I got I to tick, 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 and cross, 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 and, you know, this, 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 and do all these things. And I'm sure to get it backwards. I'm sure to fail. I'm sure to miss out on something. But the scripture says that when we know God, we find out how easy he is to please. And I have this one friend and, you know, a few years back, it was her birthday. And there was a few of us together and we had literally forgot her birthday. Like, I'm telling you, we just forgot it. And we were going to see her. We totally forgot today was her birthday. So I had a couple other friends with me. I'm like, oh my goodness, she's going to be here in like 
seven minutes and we forgot it's her birthday. Like how terrible of friends are we, right? You know, we're like, we got seven minutes to come up with something great, you know? And so we're like going through our purses, going through our handbags, like scrounging around for like anything we have for gifts or things to make things with. And in seven minutes, we kind of come up with this, you know, impromptu birthday party, right? She comes in and we've got like, you know, chocolate bars and packages of gum that haven't been opened or maybe they had been opened. I don't know, right? And she just starts jumping up and down. She's like, oh my God, this is the best birthday I've ever had, you know? And she's like putting a piece of gum in and she's like, you know, doing the happy dance and twirling around. And we were just like, thank you, Jesus, right? But that friend was easy to please. How about if we recognize that God is easy to please? We just, you know, want to follow God. We've got that heart to follow God. We, you know, take a couple steps forward. God tells us to do something. We do the best we can to do what God has told us to do. And we find out that God is easy to please. God is not a religious, angry man in the sky ready to point out every failure and every mistake you've ever made. No, God is easy to please. He's doing like the happy dance, like my friend, right? He's doing the happy dance. Why? Because he's so excited that you thought of him. He's so excited that you've remembered there's a purpose on your life. There's a plan of God on your life. God is easy to please. And if you remember anything from this message today, I want you to write it down this morning. God is easy to please. God is easy to please. You remember my friend's happy dance over a half-eaten package of gum, okay? God is easy to please. Let's go back to the verse, verse 8 to 9. God, you are so good to me. When people turn to you, God, they discover how easy you are to please, so faithful and true. Joyfully, you teach them the proper plan. And when they go astray, turn to the person beside you and say, that has occasionally been me. And when they go astray, keep showing the humble, the one who says, I cannot do it without you, God. Keep showing the humble your path and lead them into the best decision. Bring revelation light that trains them in your truth. See, what's God going to do? You go astray, going to bring you right back on there. Revelation light that trains you in the truth of God, that sets you free over and over and over again. The third one this morning, trust that God has a superior plan and purpose for your life. You make some plans, you've got some ideas, you've got some dreams, and that's great, but God does have a superior plan for you. It'll, the Bible says it'll be greater than what you could desire. It'll be bigger than what you thought you were capable of in your own ability. God says it will be bigger, and Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says, place your trust in the eternal. Rely on him completely. Never depend on your own ideas and inventions. Give him the credit for everything that you accomplish. This morning, has anybody here ever accomplished something? Let's give him the credit right now. Let's, and on a count of three, let's give him a shout. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you the credit. We give you the credit. Give him the credit for everything you accomplish. You could not do it without him. And it says, if you give him the credit for what you accomplish, what does he do? Pastor Steve shared this this morning. He will smooth out and straighten out the road that lies ahead of you. He's going to smooth it out. He's going to straighten it out. The road, the purpose, the plan that lies ahead of you. And you will never be happy or satisfied outside of God's plan for your life. There will always be great frustration when, when there's not that, that passion, that purpose, that direction, your eyes looking. You'll never be happy as a believer outside of the plan of God for your life. You'll be frustrated. But inside of the plan of God, God's going to take us to what Pastor Steve talked about, the sweet spot. The sweet spot of you living in the purpose and the plan of God. The next one this morning, commit your current work to God. That's one of the ways that you step into God's purpose and his plan for your life. And some people say, well, I'm not going to do anything until God tells me what to do. Okay, no, 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 please don't do that, okay? Please don't sit on the couch for the next three months of your life while you're trying to figure out what God wants you to do. Just honor him with your current work. 
Whatever you're doing right now, honor him. You got this job, honor him in the job you have. You got this open door, then honor him in the open door you have. You're serving in this department of church, then honor him in the department of church that you're serving in. Just take whatever you're doing, your current work, and honor God. Commit that current work to God. Say, God, I don't know why I'm at this job. I don't know why I'm serving in this department, but God, I commit it to you. I ask you to use it for something good. I ask you to to multiply it, God. I ask you to open my eyes to see what you're doing in this current situation. And Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him. And your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and his guidance. You just commit whatever you're doing right now to God. And it says all of a sudden he's going to begin to guide you. Don't just sit there. I'm not doing nothing. No, 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 no. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep serving where you're serving. Keep working where you're working. Until you get the next direction, you just keep going where you're going. Submit it to God. Surrender it to God. And let him guide you into the next steps of your life. And the last one this morning, how do we step into this purpose of knowing God in a greater way? Trust the grace is there for you to walk in his plan and his purpose. Trust that the grace of God is there. You know, sometimes, again, religion puts this pressure on you. I got to do the purpose of God. I got to do what God has told me to do. There's this pressure, right? This pressure comes around us, and this confusion comes around us. And I don't know about you, but there's some, some personalities. If I can't do it perfect, I'm not even going to start. Anybody ever, anybody know somebody like that? You know, if, if I can't clean the bathroom perfect, I'm not going to clean the bathroom. You know, if, if, I, if I can't write the text perfect, I'm not going to write the text, right? If I, if I can't do it perfect, I'm not going to do anything. And yet that's not the way God works. The Bible says that he just takes you one step at a time. So you just, okay, I'm going to just tackle the toilet, right? I'm just going to, I'm going to write the text and put a few emojis in there in case I mess up on a few words, okay? So they know it's a happy text, whatever it is right here. I'm going to do what I can do. Trust the grace is there. Don't, don't allow this pressure to be on your life where you're like paralyzed. If I don't do it perfect, I, I, I'm going to mess this thing up. So I'm going to do nothing. And that fear paralyzes you from the movement and the progression towards your purpose. If I don't pray perfectly, can I tell you, there's not a perfect way to pray. You talk to God the way that you would talk to your best friend. Just talk to him. There's no right or wrong way to talk to God. You got two languages, you, you talk to God in whichever language is the one that you want to. You know, you got an accent, you talk to God in your accent. That's the way it works. You know, you're a little bit of a, you know, a street person, you got a bit of slang. Guess what? God understands slang. There ain't no problem, Right. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not like, oh, you're trying to figure out all the right words. Sometimes people get into a small group and it comes to their turn to pray. Pass, because they're so pressured to try to figure out how to say it right. There's no right or wrong way. And I know you've met those, those people, you know, those religious people, that they know how to say everything just right. And you say, wow. When they pray, it's like poetry. You know, it's like, woo! it sounds so good. My, I don't sound like that when I pray. And God's going, whew, I'm glad you don't sound like that when you pray. It's like a hollow gong, right? You know, I don't want my, I mean, poetry once in a while. Okay. But I don't want my husband just poetry. I'm like, what's up? Tell me the truth. What's, what's going on? What do we got to do here? What, you know, give me three steps. What has to be done? I don't want a whole poetic thing every time he talks to me. God's not looking for some religious words. Oh, thou, thou, thou. And some people got so many gods and fathers and this and that and everything else. It's like, God's confused. Am I still the father? You know, like who, who are the other thousand fathers? Who are the other thousand these? You know, just talk to God. When I talk to the people I love, I talk real. I say, hey, there's something going on right now. That's how you talk to God. Hey, something going on right now. I don't know what's wrong with me. But something's wrong. <laughs> Fix me, Jesus. And you want to know what God's going to say? I am the fixer. I am the healer. I am the God who fixes the soul. I mend the broken heart. I heal the wounded. I heal the sick. I am that God. Fix me, Jesus. Depend on the grace. The grace is there for you to know him. God's not waiting for you to be perfect, to have a relationship with you. The grace is there. The grace is there. Step into the grace of your relationship. And 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, my last verse this morning. It says, may I know you 
more, may I know more and more of this grace. You know, the older I get, the more I need the grace. You know, I was younger, and you think, I can do it. I can do it by myself. Then you get a little older, you're like, I can do it with some help. Then you get a little older, and you're like, I can do nothing. <laughs> I need grace. I need grace. Right? You begin to see all the areas that you kind of blew it and messed up, and if I could go back and change a few things, how good it would be. Anybody ever thought hindsight is a beautiful thing? I mean, if I could just go back 20 years and make a few changes. But the older you get, and if you're young today, and if you're young today watching this, don't wait till you're older to depend on more and more grace. Learn it while you're young. The kids' church is learning it this morning. How to soak in and depend on the grace of God. The grace of God is the power to do it. The power to walk it through. The power to live it. I says, I want to know more and more of this grace and this peace. As your knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord grows deeper. The more you get to know him, the more grace you experience. It says everything that goes into a life of pleasing God. How many want to please God this morning? Give me a wave. It says everything you need. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has already miraculously been given to you as you personally and intimately know the one who invited you into a relationship with him. It says, I want to please him. Everything you need to please God has already been given to you. You step into a relationship of knowing God, download everything you need to please him. It's already on the inside of you. Not trying to pick it up. You don't have to buy it somewhere. Everything you need to please God to fulfill your purpose, to know God in an intimate way. It has been downloaded on the inside of you. And if you don't yet know Jesus as your personal Savior, today when you ask him to be the leader in your life, there's going to be a download. A download of everything you need to please God, to know God, to live for God, to fulfill your purpose. is going to get downloaded on the inside of you so that you are fully equipped. And it says so that you can intimately know your God. And this morning, that's what I want to pray for you for. So if you can close your eyes and bow your heads today. As you're watching with us online, we're going to pray together as a community of faith right now. As we do that, we encourage you to stay linked up with us. Pray out loud with us wherever you are viewing this. Let the words come out of your mouth as we pray together. We believe that something phenomenal happens when we just speak the word, when we pray together, when we come into agreement. So when you are watching online, know that you have a whole crowd of people that are agreeing for you, that are believing with you, who are believing for that down download to happen in your life right now, or if the download's already happened, that there's an activation of that download today. And so we are agreeing, we are believing with you as you watch online. So this morning with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to ask two questions today. Number one, if you're in the place today that you've never asked Jesus to be the leader in your life, you've never made that decision in your life. And if you haven't made that decision, today's the day. That's where the download happens of everything you need comes to you. The Bible calls it being born again. When we are born again, the download of everything we need to please God comes on the inside of us. If you haven't done that, I want to pray with you today. Second question I want to ask today is if you're in the place today, you say, I've done that. I've asked Jesus to be the leader in my life. I didn't know there was a download. I didn't know that it happened. I didn't know God was easy to please. And maybe you've been trying to kind of muddle through and, and you know, between media and, and movies and maybe relatives or this or that, you've had a mixture of a personal relationship with God and religion. It's kind of all mixed together. And you didn't know God was easy to please, but today the word spoke to you and you know now God is easy to please. That download of everything that you need is already on the inside of you as a believer. Today, if you just want me to pray over it, to just activate it, to just stir it up on the inside, I would love to do that with you today. And so two things. Number one, if you need to give your life to Jesus, ask him to be the leader in your life. Two, if you're already a believer and you say, I want that just activated, that download, I want to pray with you. With no one looking around, I want you to just give me a wave, lift your hand up and down so I know who I'm praying for today. Okay, fantastic, 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 fantastic. Go ahead today and put your hand on your heart. We're going to pray this prayer out loud together. Say it nice and loud, nice and bold so the person sitting beside you doesn't feel like their voice is the only one they're hearing. We're going to pray this prayer out loud, and after that, I'm going to pray over you. So repeat these words after me and say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, Jesus, I open the door of my heart 
and my life. And I receive you as my leader. I thank you that today every mistake that I've ever made is forgiven under your blood. And I thank you that today there is a download of everything that I need to know you and to please you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, today I thank you, Holy Spirit, for stirring up activating that download on the inside of them. God, everything they need to serve you, everything they need to please you, God, everything they need to get to know you in a greater way, God, I thank you, it's downloaded. And so today, God, we loose your Holy Spirit to activate that download, to awaken it, God, to stir it up. God, we thank you this week is a week to get to know you better. This week is a week that when we open the Bible, it's gonna speak to us, God. This week is a week that we get to talk to you and we get to now step into our best friend relationship with you, Jesus. And so God, I thank you right now by your spirit that there is a activation, a stirring, a loosening, that our eyes are open, God, to see that you are easy to please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. What a great message from Pastor Steve and Pastor Carmen. We are experiencing freedom. If this is your first time with us here today. We just ask that you reach out, say hi, visit our webpage at livechurch.ca. We'd love to have you come out every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Please feel free to invite your friends and family. We will have a great experience. Or check out our live stream at 11 a.m., 12.30 p.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. If this is your first time with us here today, guys, feel free. Come out every Sunday. It's going to be amazing. Life is going ahead. We love you guys.